So in this chapter, we're going to start to discuss what a plant definition actually is. Now, this is a pretty big topic, so we're going to split this up into a few different chapters. In this one, we're going to focus mainly on the graphics portion of the definition. Uh, but to start, let me kind of introduce what a plant definition is. So in VectorWorks, a plant definition is stored as a, a symbol resource that can be accessed either through the, the resource selector of the plant tool, which we saw in the uh, placing plant chapter, or directly through the resource manager itself. Now, again, if you're not familiar with the resource manager or uh, the resource selector, definitely go check out the, the chapters on resource manager first and then come back to this chapter. The symbols themselves of the plant definition store both the, the 2D and 3D graphics of the plant, as well as some insertion options, schedule information, render settings, and botanical information about that particular plant. So in what we're going to do in this chapter, as I mentioned, we're going to take a look at mainly the 2D and 3D graphics of the plant definition. So let's go ahead and begin by taking a look at some of the plants that have already been placed in this file. We can access the graphics of this plant that you see here, this plant object, uh, in two ways. We can either go through the resource manager directly, or we can actually access the graphics directly through this, this placed plant object. Now we're going to look at both methods, but uh, through the resource manager to, to find this particular plant and look at its graphics, we need to open the resource manager. Now this can be done by going to the window menu, then palettes, and then choosing resource manager. Uh, or if it's hidden or shaded, just hover over top of it at the top of your screen and the full resource manager will appear. Now we want to navigate to our active file. We can just click on the home button at the top uh, and that will bring us our active file. Now we just need to find the plant symbol itself and then right click on it. And then when we right click on it, we have some edit options here. And specifically, the, the two portions of the graphics are going to be in the 2D component or the 3D component. So depending on your needs, you would choose either 2D or 3D. Now, to access these same graphics directly through a placed plant, it's a little bit quicker. All we do is right click on the plant. If you're on a Mac that doesn't have right click enabled, you're going to want to hold down on the control key and click on the object. And this will bring this menu up. And now we can just choose to edit either the 2D or the 3D graphics. This can also be accessed by simply double clicking on the plant. And this will bring up the same uh, edit dialog where we can choose between uh, the 2D or 3D graphics of the plant. Now, when we choose to edit either the 2D or the 3D components through either method, through the resource manager or through a placed plant, this is going to bring us into an edit mode. So we're going to start by going into the 2D graphics of a plant. The edit mode in Vectorworks is pretty universal. You're going to get these orange borders around the screen. And this just is the universal indicator that we're in an edit mode of some sort. Now, while in this edit mode, we can directly edit the, the geometry, in this case, the 2D geometry of the plant. Uh, so the 2D graphics uh, for plants are typically made up of several different parts. And we're going to go through each of these parts individually. This particular plant consists of a uh, base outline object. Then we have a color fill object and some objects that represent the interior line work of this particular plant. Now, other plants may have additional objects that represent maybe bloom or the canopy of the plant, uh, depending on the type of plant that you're working with. So you're not limited to these specific objects. This is just what this particular uh, plant is using. Now, going through and separating these different parts is important. Uh, you might be thinking, well, why can't I just create a single object that has all this different, these different attributes and colors and shapes? Um, the benefit of this is to, to give you some control or flexibility later on. Uh, so you do want to make sure you separate them. And specifically, these uh, different objects are actually using different classes as well. Now, if you're not familiar with classes and their uses, uh, please take a few minutes, go ahead, pause the video, and take a look at our, our introduction to classes video. Uh, that'll help you get a little bit more acquainted with classes in general in Vectorworks. Now, if we take a look at these objects, the following classes are used by these different objects uh, by default here in Vectorworks. Uh, so first, we have our plant component bloom. This class is usually used to represent objects uh, that, that are for the bloom or flowers uh, of a particular uh, plant. Next, we have the uh, plant component canopy class. Now, again, this is exactly what it sounds like. It's meant to represent the canopy of trees. Uh, now, typically objects placed in this class will have an opacity. Uh, the default opacity is 50%. Uh, and this is controlled by the class attribute settings. 
The opacity itself, the purpose of this, is so that uh, plants, say, that are placed on the lower story level will, be, uh, will still be visible underneath the canopies. Next, we have the plant component color fill. Objects that uh, represent the color of the plant are placed into this class. These objects are typically are going to have their pen style set to none. So they're essentially just a, a fill of color. There's no edge to them. And unlike uh, objects in the canopy class, uh, this class is set to 100% opacity. Uh, so they're fully visible. Mainly this is because these are meant to represent the upper story plants, which do not need to, to show anything underneath them. Then we have our uh, plant component interior line work class. And uh, this, just as it says, uh, is going to represent any, any detail line work that you use for the plant. Uh, so whether it's like branches or something, just to give it a little bit more detail, you're going to use this class. And then finally, we have our, our plant component outline. The outline object is a simple shape uh, to represent the plant. Typically, this is the same basic shape as the color fill object. But one of the differences is that it has a pen style that that'll be set to solid, but the fill will be set to none. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, the reason that, that I'm bringing up all these different classes is that we these do come into play later on. And also that the using the visibility settings that you have with classes, you can turn different parts of a plant on and off using these class settings when the different parts of it are placed into those classes. Uh, so for instance, if I didn't want to see the line work, I could turn off the plant component line, uh, line work class, interior line work class if I'd like. Maybe I didn't want to see the bloom. I can turn those classes to, to invisible if I'd like. So you can kind of get an idea of you can change these around depending on your needs common method or a common example of this is that say you need to send uh, your your design to to an architect and all they need is simple outlines you would essentially turn off all the classes except for the plant component outline class because uh, that way you'll get just a simple representation of your plants now a key thing to remember as well is not all plants will use all of these classes it really depends on the type of plant whether or not you need all the classes for example uh, you're not going to really need a canopy class for a shrub or ground covering of some sort it's also possible to have more than one object in the same class uh, for example it's it's typical to have multiple objects in the bloom or the the interior line work classes uh, to, to represent those different parts of it so you're not restricted to just one object per class classes are mainly meant just for visibility control of those different parts. In another case, you could possibly have multiple objects stacked on top of each other to represent uh, the color fill, for instance. It's maybe different types of, uh, of gradients with different levels of opacity and color uh, to get the type of representation of the plant you're looking for. In addition, uh, you're not restricted to just these classes. These are just the default classes uh, we use for our plants in Vectorworks. Now, a benefit of using these is that if you're using plants from our default library, uh, they will all use these classes and you'll have some consistency. But if you don't like the, the particular ones or you need additional classes, go ahead and create those additional classes as needed. Now, the final thing we want to look at here uh, about these different objects is the stacking order of these objects. Uh, the stacking order is very important. Uh, and what I mean by stacking order is it, basically if you're looking at these in a plan view, what is on top of the other object. Not only uh, does the stacking order matter to get to the exact 2D representation you're looking for, for instance, if the color fill object is above the interior line work, it might not show. You definitely want to make sure you're paying attention to the stacking order for that. But also some of the plant massing effects that, that can be uh, applied to plant objects in Vectorworks depend on the, the stacking order and what object is the backmost object or the bottom object uh, in the stacking order. Your color fill object. Um, that's what you want to be your backmost object. Now, if you get in a situation where you've generated the objects in the wrong order or something's not working, you can change the stacking order. There's no need to recreate these objects. Uh, to, to change stacking order in Vectorworks, uh, you're just going to use the, the send command. Uh, the send command is found in the modified menu. Uh, just select the object and then choose to send it forward or backward uh, or front to back, uh, depending on your needs. Now, the key thing to remember, though, about these 2D graphics, any change that you make in this mode here, so by going into the 2D graphics, any changes you make to these objects will affect every instance of this plant. So if you change the fill color of the, the, the color fill object, that's going to push out to every single object in this document.
So now that we have an idea of, of the parts of a two, the 2D representation of a plant, uh, we're going to go in and take a look at the 3D representation. Now, we will go in in later chapters into creating a plant from the ground up. So we're going to go into how to create these different shapes and layer them uh, in a later chapter. Uh, but for now, we're just kind of focusing on the core parts of the graphics here, uh, here for plant objects. So now let's go ahead and jump into the 3D representation. Uh, so again, using the same procedure we did uh, initially to get into the 2D graphics, we can either go through uh, the resource manager or just double click on the plant and choose to edit the 3D graphics. We're brought into a similar editing mode. So we have the same orange border around the screen. Uh, now, the only thing that looks a little bit different is it appears that we just have these two crossed lines for this particular plant. Uh, these are actually not lines, um, but this is just a, a top view uh, or top plan view representation of an image prop object. Now, initially, when we just look at this in 3D, again, it's going to look like a couple of crossed planes. Uh, this is just because we need to render the view in order to see it. So we're going to go in and we're going to go ahead and render this. We're going to use OpenGL uh, for this particular one, but this will work with any render mode that supports textures, uh, like uh, the majority of our, our render works modes as well. Uh, now, an image prop, it's a, it's a method of representing a 3D object uh, without actually modeling the full 3D object. So an image prop in general is essentially just an image that's being displayed in 3D of the object. Now, this is great for, um, for plants because you can get an actual photo of a particular plant and use it to represent the object in 3D space in Vectorworks. Now, Image props are great, as I mentioned, because it's quick and easy way to represent these in 3D. They also look very realistic, uh, and they're also very efficient as well. They're just essentially two planes with an image on it, uh, or a texture in this case. Uh, and it keeps, uh, especially when you're, you're placing hundreds of plants, uh, this is a great way to, to keep down file size as well as keep your file as responsive as possible. Now you can generate image props like this uh, through the, the plant definition when setting it up. There's a, a create from image option found in, in the uh, edit plant definition dialog box. We're going to go through the process of creating plant image props uh, in a later chapter when we go into creating a plant from, from the ground up. But if you're, if you're looking for more information on image props in general and their creation, go ahead and check out the uh, image props chapter and the rendering in Vectorworks guide. Uh, that's a great chapter that's going to go through describing what an image prop is and how to create one. Now, in addition to image props uh, to generate a 3D representation of your plant, you can also model the plant in 3D. Now, initially, a 3D model can be created using uh, the generate option, which is also found uh, in the edit plant definition dialog. Uh, now, this is going to generate a basic model for the plant. Uh, now, again, we're going to go into discussing the, the various options and actually specifically going into the generate option uh, in another chapter. Uh, but this is really commonly used to create an initial schematic representation for the plant until an actual plant species is assigned and then a more realistic representation with either an image prop or a 3D model will be placed. Now, a more realistic 3D model uh, can be generated using the VB Visual Plant Tool. Uh, now, the VB Visual Plant Tool is found in the Visualization Tool Set. So if we take a, a look in the bottom left corner here in our Tool Sets palette, uh, we can go to our Visualization Tool Set and you'll see the VB Visual Tool here. Now, this tool places full 3D models of spe uh, specific species of plants. Now, there are a sampling available with Vectorworks. Um, so there's very, various different settings here. Now, each of these particular species uh, has some options. So you have height, resolution, season options, and so on. Uh, so there is some customization control you have uh, for VB Visual Plants. And these provide a, a very realistic look for your plants in 3D. Now, these are considerably more complex than just a simple image prop. Um, so usually these are, these are used a little bit more sparingly. There's a sampling available with Vectorworks if you're looking for more species of plants. Uh, if you just click on the More Plants button at the bottom of this list here in the toolbar, uh, you can go ahead and that'll bring you to the VB Visual Plant site and you can go ahead and look through uh, their various libraries of, of additional plants uh, and plant species. So that kind of wraps us up for uh, the 2D and 3D graphics of the plant definition. In the next chapter, we're going to dig into the, uh, the data and settings portion of the plant definition.